Charles Faithfully and I'm at the Ellis Island Museum. You can hear the sounds of all the different types of immigrants to the United States that have passed here uh, through this island, either through their own choice or forced by others. It is a diverse America, that's for certain. My own ancestors came here from uh, Switzerland and Germany and Norway and Sweden and um, these spaces were a bit more hospitable to them than they were for for other folk who were brought here or who lived here already but were told that their land would be taken away through manifest destiny which is the idea that God decided that certain types of people were more important and this land was their destiny based on their skin and based on their genealogy. That's my way of, of saying that bad theology's been around for a long time. And when bad theology meets opportunity or times of change or times when it seems like there's a new group of people to exploit or a new group of people to fear, then bad things happen. So, what do we do about it? How can we fix it? Can we untangle ourselves from all of these voices and all of the ways that the past has really colonized and done terrible things to other people? There's a couple things we can do. One, listen to the voices of those who have the most skin in the game, the most blood and the most vulnerabilities. We need to do the best we can to listen to their voices, whether it is through museum exhibits or just literally listening to their voices. Have you noticed how the voices change as I walk through this space? There are so many people who have amazing stories that you could learn from. Uh, the second thing is to think about the ways that we are consuming other products, the ways that our theology when we proclaim that God names and claims us and we are good, if that declaration is coming in spite of or to tell other people that they're not as good as us, that's not good news, people, because our God is a God for everybody. And this melting pot of a country that I live in is one that has a God who understands and created diverse and fabulous folk. Right, that full diversity is a part of what we need to do. The second, maybe it's the third thing, I'm bad with, with listing while walking through a museum, but the other thing we have to do is repent. The folk who have gained from practices that have exploited others or kept them vulnerable need to repent, particularly for times when bad theology meets bad timing. Um, an example that I can think of is uh, the AIDS crisis was a time when faithful people decided they should declare that gay people were terrible and that condoms shouldn't be used, exacerbating that crisis and really just having bad theology mixed with bad timing. We have to find ways that we can repent authentically and still be faith communities that are working ever stridently towards justice. Why? Because we have to. Thanks everybody and I'll check in with you again later. Immigration continues to be a prevalent and important issue here in the United States and it's an important issue of faith because if this is one nation under God, what does it mean and who should be the people who are deciding who is in and who is out? Which refugees are allowed and which aren't? Which people are worth more than others? Who should be deemed a good citizen? who should be saved from war-torn, ravaged nations, and who shouldn't. At Ellis Island, in its early days, they screened out people who had mental health issues, they had IQ tests, they had even gynecological tests for people to get in. What is, what is the list of things your body has to be able to do in order to be in this one nation under God? And if we think God names and claims everybody, no matter how fabulously diverse they are, then being a part of conversations about immigration 
is a faith issue. I don't know where you stand on this issue. I tend to think that God loves all people. So how do we manage the resources that we have? How do we manage conversations about who's in and who's out? And how can we do this faithfully as good news rather than just as people who are afraid and hoarding resources for ourselves? I don't know if I have the answers to all of those political ideals, but one thing I do know is when people came to this space at Ellis Island and they looked out the window over at the Statue of Liberty, they came here with hope. And I want a nation under God to be one that lives in hope, that looks for the light, that seeks to be better and lifts up our neighbor. Let's lean into that.